Hey everybody, let's give a hand to Nicholas. Hey, hi, I'm Nicholas Tay, and you guys are best friends and producers in my movie, Rust, animated movie, Rust. Okay, so Rust is when an ex-Special Forces soldier is dispatched to put a stop to an insurrectionist group, he's forced to face his past. And so the story of Rust is kind of like a dystopian sci-fi centered around action, event, anarchy, and everybody in the story is a robot. So I just thought that was cool. So our plot is set in the story uh, the world of Ublar. Who was kind of like the only nation here, so there's really nothing else. Um, um, and Gublar is a nation that is recovering from war, and as a result, there is a lot of corruption and greed within society, which kind of led all the money to be fun funneled into the capital. Um, so, like that kind of leaves the outskirts of Gublar's underfunding and poor. So, we start off with our main character, Matt. He's an ex-Special Forces member of the military, and he's now a world executioner, which means he executes hundreds of people every day. And as it turns out, killing a lot of people takes a toll on your mental health. So he suffers from PTSD, and as we learn later, he's the commander of New Preservatives, which is a group tasked with uh, taking down this guy, Judgment. So Judgment is the leader of Nightshade, uh, Insurrectionist group that popped up a couple of years prior, um, and they do kind of go around attacking the capital and creating, like, getting their arms, their funds, and also getting defectors who agree with their mission. Well, Judgment is the leader of that and it's kind of just a character shrouded in mystery. Right. So, Act One actually begins 10 years prior to the events of Rust with Mac and the original preservers, um, Dusty and Chamber. So, uh, Dusty, Chamber, and Mac are on a mission in a foreign country, and they're there to retrieve uh, files. And so they're on the base, and they manage to infiltrate the base, and Dusty gets his hand fi hands on the files. However, he reads them, and he finds out about the atrocities that his country is like, uh, doing as these people, like the various war crimes that they're committing, and he doesn't agree with this. He thinks that um, they should put a stop to this, and he thinks that if he leaks these files to the press, the support for the war would end back at home, leading kind of like them to go back home and like be at peace. However, Mac doesn't agree. He says that they're soldiers. They're there to follow orders and not think. They're there to do. And so, as enemy soldiers are kind of closing in on them, Mac gives Dusty an ultimatum. Like they can either leave there with the files, with or without Dusty, and Dusty like won't budge. So they do just end up leaving there without him, which leads us to present day, where the government <coughs> has recruited Mac to be in charge of the new preservers. Um, and when when they initially recruited Mac, he did want Chamber to be a part of his group. However, Chamber had gone missing like due to unknown circumstances uh, a couple of years prior. And so Mac gradually just goes on with his new group. Now, now his new group uh, learns about a crazy weapons arms deal that Nightshade is going to be uh, engaging in with the leader, um, Judgment, showing up and you know facilitating his deal. So when Mac and his new team go to intercept the deal, uh, they do intercept the deal, however, Mac uh, does lose all all of his team members, um, which leaves him in a one-on-one -on -one situation with Judgment. And so as Judgment and him are battling it out, Mac ends up knocking Judgment's mask off and revealing who he actually is. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> so... I guess it's easy to have a Um So for my essay, uh, I did research about the death penalty, and I didn't really go too much into depth about Mac's job here, but Mac uh, executes hundreds of people from various walks of life, and uh, their crimes are, aren't really 
like if you bring sort of major crimes to petty crimes, which is a big deal because um, <coughs> kind of like no basis for whether people should be executed, which is a topic I did touch on in my essay about the death penalty, um, about how it is discriminatory and uh, like, yeah, discriminatory against these people. Decision. It was a tough decision for you to make, but I think it worked out really well. 